Okay, welcome to the OmniTag walkthrough video. Uh, I'm going to be running this walkthrough on Windows, but uh, the software now works the same on Mac. So uh, this is uh, now version 2 of OmniTag. So when we start up the software, it does some scanning. And uh, the first question I'm being asked here is to locate the Steam folder. So uh, it's not at the default location. And I did this intentionally because I know a lot of people like to move the, the Steam folder to an external drive or whatever. Um, and on the, and an important point on that, on the Mac, uh, you have to actually go to the location of the files, not the alias, because uh, Spectrosonics will actually instruct you to put an alias uh, for the Steam folder, but you actually have to go to the sample drive wherever you're, you've got your files. Just a note for the Mac users there. But um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my Steam folder. And um, you'll see here it does a scan. Um, it scanned all my factory libraries, and it's also going to scan my third-party libraries that I have installed. And um, so I'm instantly presented with a, or initially presented with a message here that says patch prefixes detected. And basically, you know how there's a lot of developers that have um, a keyword at the start of the name, like, you know, base or lead or, or whatever. So um, OmniTag detects that and can convert that into a category instead. Uh, if you prefer, or some people like to work with the prefix still in the patch name. And so you can choose uh, how you'd like to do it. So here's the libraries that use the prefix. Um, and basically, it's going to take us to an engine options uh, screen right now. And we can remove the prefixes. We can have OmniTag remove the prefixes. And if we choose to remove the prefixes, we can also have it give us a warning before we can form a library that has those prefixes up to you. Or you can just take the warning off and just let it blitz through and, and uh, clean up those prefixes. So I'm going to choose to remove the prefixes, but not show warning. Um, and you also see here there's a new feature I added in version 2 for ignored folders. Um, I had a couple users that had trouble um, when they tried to conform their user folder, because the user folder could be any combination of, of levels and, and uh, structure. So uh, by default, the user folder is now ignored, as is the sharing folder. Um, if you would like to include those in the scanning, you can just X them out here and uh, go on with it. So, OK, so let's hit OK here. And this is the main uh, menu of OmniTag. Uh, presents you with a list of all the the third-party libraries on your system. This is basically just a um, whatever you have in your Steam folder in Steam Omnisphere Settings Library Patches. Um, you're going to see those libraries here. And by each library, there's an indicator. Uh, it's either going to be green, yellow, or red. And it basically indicates how many patches already match Spectrosonic standards in terms of the category and the type that are being used in the patch. And it just gives you a, um, a quick visual, um, a kind of the condition of, of the libraries and how closely they match. So let's, uh, in terms of other things on the screen here, we've got some buttons on the right. You can rescan your uh, library folder. Um, just basically looks at the Steam folder again and updates. Conform all basically would go through all of these libraries one by one and conform them. The Steam folder button allows you to see just where your Steam folder is and which one it's pointing to, which products you have installed on your system, and which tags were loaded for those products. Because again, the way OmniTag works is it actually loads all these tags from whatever you have installed, and it tries to match the, the, the patch data to these existing categories. And so it's important 
that it can load all these uh, these tags here. And you can see there's just hundreds of them. If for some reason you're a data nerd and you want to copy uh, and, and look at these in Excel or something, you can hit the copy button, which will basically put it on your clipboard and then you can paste it into Excel or Notepad or whatever you want to do. So that is the Steam folder uh, button. Options is the same menu we saw previously. Uh, if you have any folders you're ignoring, you'll see those here, as well as the prefix options. And the About Omni tag is just a, an About box. So let's look uh, a bit further and actually form some libraries. Um, if you click on a library, you'll see some options here. Uh, one is Ignore, if I want to add this library to the Ignore list. One is Preview which is opens up a preview window to actually go through the patches. The other is to actually just conform the library. So let's go ahead and just uh, experiment with this. Let's go ahead and just ignore the library. Um, and Omnitag will no longer include this library in scanning or conform operations. If I hit yes, it does a rescan and now it's missing. Um, it's no longer part of my world here. But if I go back to options, I see that it's here and I can just take it off the list. And now he's back. So next up, let's go ahead and look at uh, preview. If I click on preview for any library, it's going to bring up a window where you can basically see what Omnitag will do before it makes any changes to the library. It's just a, a, a preview window. So you can scroll through the patches, just allows you to thumb through the patches and see the changes that it would it would make. So you can see in, in this library here, it's using this older ARP and rhythm category from, I don't know if that's Omnisphere 1 or Atmosphere or whatever, but in Omni 2, it's now called ARP plus BPM. So this will go ahead and, and tidy up uh, this category and convert it to the new ARP and BPM category, as well as assign it the new BPM types that are within the ARP and BPM category. Um, anyway, you could just thumb through these uh, patches and just kind of get an idea of what changes Omnitag would make. Sometimes it doesn't make uh, very many changes at all. Um, sometimes it makes a lot. Um, if you're interested in um, kind of what change, there's a log function here that just gives you a, a quick change log of what it's going to do. It's going to change the category. It's going to add a type or remove a couple types and uh, add some keywords in this one case. You can also copy that to the clipboard if you like to. Um, and so that's basically the preview uh, menu. Um, if you look at one of these libraries that has um, some prefixes like the triple spiral, you see here, if because I have those patch options to remove the prefix, it converts that pulse into a series of types, like for example, BPM pulsing, it adds that instead and removes pulse from the name of the patch. And you can see that it does that with all, all of these. If I go back to the options and turn off the prefix warning, Go to preview, you see it preserves the the prefix now. So and still takes it still takes the data though, the pulse, that that piece of text and it applies uh, any types that, that it finds that, that might be a good match. So So let's go back here and turn the prefix uh, message on and let's actually conform uh, one of these libraries, um, it's actually really easy. You just click on library, click conform. It asks you, are you sure? And you hit yes. A hundred patches were processed. Remember to refresh the patch browser in Omnisphere to see your changes. And boom, now, uh, this modern EDM library has got a green by it. It's 100% conformed. And if I look at the preview, it could still do even more if we ran it through a second time. But the most of these you're going to see, they're just uh, 
yeah, they're, the before and after is going to be the same. So um, you also notice that there's now a history button that pops up on this library. So let's click on that, see what this is. What this tells us is basically at one point, um, uh, we did a conform operation on this library on this date. And you can either view the log from that conform uh, by clicking here, and it tells you everything that it did to every patch in that library. If you, again, if you're a data person and just want the uh, accountability, you can go back here and see every every change that was made. Um, and you can also restore this if if you're not happy with with uh, how Omni tagged, um, you know the the decisions that it made. You just click on the the date and hit restore. Are you sure? Yep. And it'll just put it back for you just the way it was. So uh, the goal here is, you know, obviously for OmniTag to be as, uh, as helpful as possible and not intrusive. So you have a lot of control over which libraries you can form if you want to not, or if you just want to go through and, and, um, and conform them all. Um, So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and just let her rip. Um, so let's hit conform all. OmniTag will conform 12 unconformed libraries. And uh, it's going to take a moment. Um, it's basically just going to spin through each of these libraries and, and uh, conform them. Um, to kind of see what's happening behind the scenes, um, there is a folder on your computer in your documents folder here. Um, documents OmniTag, and in OmniTag, you see as it completes each library, it's creating a folder in here. And this is basically where all those backups are stored. OmniTag first makes a backup of your library, puts it here, then it conforms it, and then copies that conform version over to your, your patches folder in Steam. So you have a backup um, in this folder every time it runs through and conforms one of these libraries. So if you look in the structure of one of these uh, folders, um, you will see a subfolder for every conform operation every time it ran. And you know, we already ran this uh, modern EDM library through twice. And so you see two different conform operations. Most recent was uh, this one. And there's your backup of the library in its original state. Um, as well as a log file. Uh, it's just a text file here that that shows everything um, that OmniTag did for that particular library. So if you want to uh, kind of see the underside of what OmniTag's doing, you can go to this Documents OmniTag folder. Uh, in the Mac, it's in your user folder, so your username. Um, slash OmniTag in the Mac side. And uh, if you, you know, if you happen to run a bunch of conform operations and in, in this, this folder can get big because it basically it keeps copies of all of your, your libraries. And you can always just delete these backups if you're happy with what OmniTag did. Um, but uh, anyway, I thought it was worth a bit of explanation on what's in this folder. So let's go back to the software and you'll see here Conform completed, so 12 libraries processed, 1,500 patches processed, 18 were uncategorized. I'll explain that in just a moment. Um, please remember to refresh the patch browser in Omnisphere to see your changes. And um, that's an important step because if you don't refresh, you're not going to see Omnitag or Omnisphere actually uh, won't have rebuilt its database and you won't see any of the changes. So remember to do that. Um, so this uncategorized thing, there's a couple libraries here where OmniTag was not able to conform the patches because there was not enough data in the patch. Uh, there was just not enough in it. And so let's take a look at that real quick. Um, first of all, we've got a nice, lovely green screen for the most part, but a couple of these libraries still had some patches that couldn't be fixed for whatever reason. So let's look at those. Let's look at this uh, JRR Modern Hip Hop. So 
So this is one of those libraries where there just wasn't a lot of data in the patch. Let me see if I can find one of these uncategorized. Maybe at the end here. Yeah, here we go. So you have a, a patch like this walk word. Well, okay, maybe it's a guitar. Maybe it's that who knows what it is, but it's it's a walk word. So, um, well, that wasn't enough to to find a, a category for it or, or any types. And so Omnitag just puts it in a category called uncategorized, um, which you'll see, you would see in Omnisphere. Um, again, if you go back, let's just go ahead and restore this one just so you see what it was like before. Um, a lot of these patches, like this one is, a, is an example of one. Okay, there's enough here um, that we could put it in a percussive category because of the, probably because of the pluck keyword there. Um, but AUG chords, <laughs> that's just, there's nothing you can do with that, unfortunately. So he goes into the uncategorized bin. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and just reconform that one. And again, we get this uncategorized message, but hey, at least we got 84 out of 100, 101 patches. So, so yeah, I think, um, I, so that's really it. That is your OmniTag walkthrough, a pretty simple product. Um, I think it's helpful if you like your, your libraries uh, clean and aligned with the Spectrosonics categories. Um, and it's pretty easy to use, I think. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can find me on uh, VI Control in the forums there, as well as the support at omnitag.net email address. Um, just send an email. I'm pretty uh, active on both of those. So, so thanks for your time. Appreciate it.